Scripting. Target acquired. Beginning lock on sequence. Clarification of intent. Intent confirmed. Test number 29 commencing. Firing. Officer Lucas Moose walked the shoplifter through the box store. Stu, why do I keep having to do this? The thin man laughed through his missing teeth. You do, you bra. Moose shook him by the shirt a bit. This is third strike this year. Judge Ramsey's gonna throw you away. You know this. I warned you of this. Stu squirmed a bit as they passed by the clothing section. Is what it is. I'ma be me. You're going to be you in prison now. He shook him a bit more as they walked past the registers and then paused. The skylights above flickered. The bluish-white light flashed red, then blue-white, then red again, alternating faster and faster. The ground shook and a large roar raged outside the giant building, and then the light settled on a dim reddish yellow. The fuck was that? Earthquake? Stu asked. Officer Moose stared through the glass sliding doors where the shopping cart return was. He stared outside, looking past his flashing cop car, beyond the shoppers in the parking lot, staring up at the sky, out to where the next stores should have been. There, the horizon of stores and parking lots had been reshaped into reddish hills of dirt. He was dumbfounded and didn't feel Stu slip out of his hands. Stu ran toward the door as one of the blue-vested employees pushed it open. He slipped past and then ducked out under the flaps that held in the air as the carts pushed through them. Officer Moose slowly realized what Stu was doing but didn't react. He watched as Stu ran out across the lot and collapsed. His senses started kicking in and was about to run out to get the fallen larcenist. Then he noticed everyone else outside was laying on the ground. A hand caught his chest. A man in a button-up snap shirt put up a hand. Hold up. Look. The man pointed. Moose nodded. Yeah, everyone is collapsing. They need help. He pushed against the man's hand. The man shook his head and held him. He then looked at the employee. Get in here and get that door shut. A manager walked over and paused next to them. She looked at the officer. What is going on? What was all the shaking? Is it a bomb? Did a bomb go off? A woman behind them screamed. My babies! Was there a bomb? She ran toward the door, squeezing past the cart pusher in the blue vest. The man in the snap shirt lifted his hands up and shouted, Everyone hold up! They watched as the mother ran out across the parking lot toward her once running car. She collapsed a little farther out than Stu. The man in the snap shirt pointed at the cart pusher to continue shutting the door. He then turned and looked at Moose. Hazardous material leak, I think. We need to get the doors shut. The manager walked closer. Something in the air? He nodded, looking at her vest. Alicia? She nodded. Hey, Alicia. Bobby. He held out his hand and patted her back at the same time. Your radio? She looked at it. Tell everyone to stay inside and to get the doors shut. Something is happening. Potentially a gas attack or something. Officer Moose stared at Stu lying outside, unmoving. The general manager, Philip, gathered up everyone who was still in the store near the middle registers. He stood on a step stool and spoke with his hands. Everyone remain calm. We are in an emergency situation. He looked around the crowd of 78 people. Now, does anyone have any reception? Heads looked down at their phones. Many were shaking them, and none voiced any confirmation. Moose looked around the crowd, surveying faces, ethnicities, and potential threats. He noted the man in the snap shirt was missing. He looked around and saw him eating from a bag of jerky, staring up at the skylight. Officer Moose walked over to him slowly, his chest puffed out. Bobby, was it? Bobby pointed up at the skylight. You see that? Lucas looked up at the sky and then back at him. Yeah, sky turned red. Nah, not just the sky, look at the moon. Lucas looked back up, focusing on the small circle hazed by the daylight. He was just going to shrug but then he saw it. It's different. What the hell? Bobby took a bite of jerky, still staring. That isn't our moon. That isn't our moon? Officer Moose asked. Bobby shook his head. No, look, what are those, mountain ridges? Lucas looked. Might be, I don't know. He then looked at Bobby. You into astronomy or something? Bobby, still staring up, nodded. Something, yeah, I like science. And that isn't our moon. Science, huh? That how you knew about the gas outside? 
Bobby looked at him and shook his head. No, I work over at the refinery. Hazardous materials training every year. They drill into your head about confined spaces and following people who are dropping like that. Philip was done calming everyone down and had given clearance for everyone to have snacks and water before he started walking over to the two. Hey, Bobby. Bobby have a small wave. Hey, Philip. Alicia told me it was you who kept everyone from going out there. Moose looked at him and nodded. Yeah, he saved me from collapsing out there. Philip looked the officer over and then looked back at Bobby. What do you think is happening? Bobby took a bite of jerky from the bag and then offered it to the other two. Dunno, no. had an idea, but it's crazy. Doesn't make any sense. Philip looked over his shoulder at the crowd of people gathering around as one of the people in vests handed out candy and water. Give me anything. People are freaking out and I don't know what to tell them. He looked back at Bobby. Are we under attack? Bobby looked back up at the skylight. Check out the moon. Philip looked up and stared for a moment. It's wrong. He then looked back at Bobby and then down at the bag. He reached in and took some jerky. The gas affecting it, like ripples or something? Bobby looked at the two men and shook his head. Um, no, this is crazy. I'm stupid for thinking this. Philip sighed. You're a nerd, Bobby. Quit being ashamed for knowing shit. Spit it out. Bobby stepped closer to them and whispered, looking up at Officer Moose. You looked out past the parking lot, yeah? Moose nodded. Where'd the buildings go? No rubble, no smoke, right? Bobby asked. Moose looked at the two men and nodded. Bobby looked back up at the skylight. The air out there hurt, maybe killed those people. I know they ain't moving. That and the moon up there. It's all wrong. Philip looked around to make sure no one was near them. What's that mean? Bobby cleared his throat, nodding to himself for a moment. Um, I need to peek out the other doors to confirm, but I don't think we're in Iowa anymore. Philip pulled Alicia aside. Keep doing what you're doing. You're doing great. Keep everyone fed and happy. You're in charge here for a bit. She shook her head. What? Where are you going? He pointed at the police officer and the man in the snap shirt. We need to check something out in the loading bay. We'll be right back. She nodded in sync with him. You're going to be right back? Ten minutes. He patted her back and then walked over to the two men. She watched as they left down the aisles. Bobby was ripping a pair of binoculars out of their plastic casing as they walked. You think we're on another planet? Philip asked in a whisper, looking around for anyone. I told you it sounded crazy. Moose stared up at the red light pouring in from above. Crazy maybe, but you could be right. Philip stuck out his hand and pushed the swinging doors aside. The trio stepped into the darkened loading area. Moose looked over and saw the red tip of a joint being sucked on. The two loaders stood up straight, and the one on the right threw the joint down and stepped on it. Moose shook his head and kept walking. The three stopped near the back door. Bobby looked at the two, took a deep breath, and ducked out as Philip opened the door quickly. A moment later, Bobby pounded on the door and he was let in. He let out his breath and sucked in a new one, gasping. Smells wrong out there, stings my nose. He then pointed behind him. Yeah, it's the same though. Looks like a circle cut all the way around the store. He straightened up, breathing easier. Hell, there's a tree cut in half at the perimeter line. Moose put a hand on his shoulder. And beyond? It's all the same. Red dirt as far as I could see. Philip put his hands on his hips and started pacing. Bobby raised the binoculars. Also, that's not the only thing wrong with the moon. Philip paused, staring at him. After a moment's pause, he shrugged. And? That moon out there is one of two. Philip stood on the step stool again, clearing his throat to address the crowd. Everyone. Everyone. Heads turned to look at him. He took a breath. Everyone, listen to what I'm about to say, cause it's important. He waited a moment, making eye contact with the numerous faces staring at him. Employees, children, mothers, working men, all eyes stared. We are in an emergency situation, he pointed at Bobby and Lucas. As you all know, something happened, but until now we didn't have a clear idea what it was. My friend Bobby here, smartest kid in my class 20 years ago, has looked at numerous clues and come up with a hypothesis. 
Philip waved him over. Bobby watched as the faces turned toward him. He shook his head. Philip sighed. They need to hear it from you. You understand it better. Moose patted his back. Bobby shut his eyes for a moment, then spoke. You all can look out the windows yourself. Beyond the parking lot, everything is gone, and I mean gone. It's just dirt out there. There's no buildings, no roads, no cars, trees, nothing. He then pointed up. Also look through the skylights. You'll have to pivot to see, but there is two moons out there. A man in button-up shirt and a tie shook his head, raising his hand. Two moons! What are you talking about? Bobby pointed sternly. I encourage you to look if you don't believe me. The man looked up, shielding his brow. Bobby walked over and handed him the binoculars. Look at the edge there. The second one is just coming up so you can see it. The man looked through them, then dropped them down to look with his own eyes, then raised them again. He slowly handed them back. There's two moons. He looked around at the people. There's two moons, Philip motioned. Everyone, I'll admit I'm not the brightest. Hell, I cheated off Bobby here in algebra. I actually called him to the store today to get a bee's nest out of the loading dock. He's a nerd. He's smart, and we need to listen to what he's about to say. The murmurs quieted a bit. Bobby spoke up again. Something unknown has happened. I don't think we are on Earth anymore. It sounds crazy, but just feel it. Nothing's felt right since the shaking. He looked around. Am I wrong? A big woman who was holding a sleeping child to her shoulder spoke up. It's wrong out there. I feel it. A tattooed man in a hoodie raised a finger and spoke. What are we going to do? How the hell do we deal? I mean, really? He looked around. Not on Earth. What's that even mean? Moose stepped up beside Bobby. It means that we keep the doors shut. You go out there, you suffocate and die. It means we keep together and we keep watch at the doors. It also means we need to brainstorm ideas. If you have any. He looked around at the faces. If anyone has any, please share. A woman in the back shouted. We've been raptured. This is something holy. She slapped her friend on the back. Fuck these heathens. The reckoning is happening. She turned and started walking toward the eastern doors. Her friend looked at her and then back at the crowd. She raised her hand, motioning. You can wait if you want, but I believe in Jesus. I'm going out there. Her friend nodded her head and looked at Moose and Bobby. Yeah, fuck your crazy ideas. Moose raised a hand. Three other people joined them walking to the eastern doors. Philip looked over at the cart pusher. Lincoln, hurry, go lock those doors. The group started running. The woman reached the doors and started pushing them open. She shouted back toward everyone. Those atheists don't know shit. The rest of joined her and pushed out into the parking lot. Lincoln ran over to catch them. They were already out and gone before he could get there. Philip shouted, don't breathe the air, shut the doors tight. Lincoln nodded and began pushing them shut. He looked up as he did, watching as the five stared at the red sky before they collapsed. Moose stood guard with Lincoln at the front door as the sun set. Philip came by and handed them a battery-powered lantern and continued on. Lincoln took a puff from his vape as he stared outside. Hey, look, he pointed. Moose looked as tiny spots appeared on the pavement outside. It raining? The two looked up as they started to hear it. The patter of raindrops echoed softly overhead. A moment later, a light walked up to them. A young girl, barely a teen, handed a bucket toward them. Bobby wanted to know if you could get a sample. Lincoln, leaning on the wall, looked her over. A sample? He pointed at the door. He wants some of the rain? He laughed. Shit, that crazy man can go out there and get it himself. That shit might melt my skin or something. Moose looked out at the clouds as thin wisps or red light glimmered on the clouds high above. He could make out the trees in the parking lot waving in the wind. He reached over and took the bucket. He looked at Lincoln. Hold the door for me. We're doing this quick. Philip and the others were gathered around an electric skillet that was hooked to a series of car batteries. Bobby leaned over pointing Kurt from Automotive was cooking steak. Medium rare. Don't burn him. Kurt glared at him. It's on low. You don't have to worry about him getting burned, bud. Officer Moose walked up to the crowd. 
Bobby looked up and noticed the full bucket. Moose leaned over and set it on the ground. He then looked up at him. You wanted a sample, he pointed. There you go. Bobby reached up and patted his wet shoulder. You were out in it. You okay? Lucas Moose nodded. Cold a bit. Wet. Bobby knelt down and sniffed the chemical in the bucket. He looked up as numerous flashlights pivoted on him. Doesn't smell bad. He touched a finger in and let it sit a moment. Not burning. He then lifted his finger and licked it. The crowd groaned. Philip sighed. Shit, Bobby. We could have tested it in the fish tanks. That was stupid. Moose pointed behind himself. I'm going back to the front to keep watch. Make sure to check on everyone guarding here in an hour or so. Philip nodded. I'll keep the rounds. Kurt lifted a plate with two stakes on it toward Moose. You and Lincoln. A woman smiled and handed the officer a couple beers. They're gonna get warm if we don't drink them. Moose looked down and took the meal and drinks. Guess I am technically off duty by now. He turned and walked back toward the front. The lingerie area was cleared out for all the bedrolls and tents. Bobby filled a pillowcase with fuzzy slippers and someone had given him a football blanket. He stared up at the two reddish-yellow moons shining in the dark skylight. He listened as one of the children talked with her mother. How come the people died outside? The air is bad out there, the mother replied. The air good in here? The girl asked. Yes, it's good in here. For how long? Bobby's eyes widened. I don't know, dear, the mom responded. Shut your eyes, we're fine, go to sleep. Bobby got up quietly and went over to the school supplies. He pulled open a pack of pens and grabbed a notebook. He then left the aisle and started walking across the store. A flashlight lit up his face. Hey, what are you doing? He blocked the light with his hand, looking. It was Alicia. I gotta run some calculations. He then stepped to her side. She stepped with him, blocking him. You're not on guard. You're not doing rounds. You should be trying to sleep. We are in an emergency. You said so yourself. Bobby took a breath. Well, you are doing rounds. Would you mind if I accompanied you? She looked at him for a moment. Yeah, come on. She waved him to walk with her. Tell you truth, I'm freaked out. She whispered. We all are. I saw a few people crying pretty hard at supper, he said. She started to the left. Yeah, I broke down a bit earlier too. Can't blame them. He paused in the aisle. Hey, mind if we go buy tools first? She turned the flashlight back on him. Tools? So you can steal more stuff? He glared at her. Emergency situation. She nodded and smiled. I'm joking you. I don't give a shit. What we building? Kurt woke everyone up with pancakes, orange juice, bacon, and eggs. Bobby waited until everyone was fed and groups started to break off before he waved people over. Alicia was standing beside him already when Philip, Lincoln, Moose, and a group of four adults circled around. Bobby looked at their faces and then passed them. I did the math and I might be wrong, but I think we maybe have a week, give or take, he whispered. A week of what? Philip asked. Bobby bit his lip for a moment. A week of air, I don't really know. It's mostly me guessing with the numbers I got from measuring the store last night. We can't breathe outside and we're bottle up in here. We're going to run out. Lucas groaned. He walked over and kicked a stand of clothes over. One of the group that had come over spoke up. She pushed her curly hair out of her face and framed her hands in front of her. We will be okay. Philip put his hand out. Philip. She took it and shook it with both hands. Liz, Elizabeth, whatever, we're going to be okay, I think. Philip nodded as he took his hand back. We're running out of air, Liz. She pointed at Alicia. I watched you this morning put the water in with the fish. They didn't die, right? Alicia looked around, then at Philip and Bobby. Philip glared at her. Alicia shrugged. I wanted to know. Bobby laughed. Did they die? Liz shook her head. No, I watched them. It's water, like you said. Bobby watched her as she talked. Go on. Well, air. Air comes from trees, right? Bobby smiled. Yes, yes it does. Oxygen. She pointed at the skylights. I watched it sprinkle this morning out the front doors while I had breakfast. The maple trees out front look okay. Can't we bring them in? Philip looked around. Bobby looked up at Moose. Officer Moose shook his head. 
We'd suffocate before we could dig up one of those trees, Philip raised a finger. But the garden center has all sorts of plants, Alicia laughed. We got the seed rack, too. We could plant some tomatoes, Bobby thought for a moment. We bring in everything we can grab in a breath. Move stuff out from under the skylights. Maybe rig up some collection bins for rainwater. Yeah, this'll help. Lincoln rigged up an airlock with shelving, tape, and painter plastic. He mounted the construction outside the garden center doors and took several trips out while holding his breath to seal it shut with duct tape. They took turns running out and grabbing plants. The plastic chamber was opened and shut with a drawstring on each of the two doors as each person entered and exited. Everyone worked together to clear the center of the store. The shelves were compressed to the outer walls, allowing room for dozens of kiddie pools to be laid out. The plants were placed in each until there wasn't any room. Ferns, marigolds, herbs, tropicals, and numerous other veggies were crammed in under the skylights. That evening, Kurt cooked his way through the rest of the meats as they watched it rain outside, filling the dozens of ice chests and buckets the survivors had spread outside the door. The bathrooms filled up to the point of being a biohazard within the week. Lincoln and Bobby took it upon themselves to assist in the situation, and with numerous close calls of throwing up, they moved honey buckets out to the open-air area where the plant department once was, outside. Bobby tested out a breathing apparatus he cobbled together with a couple empty milk jugs. Moose held the rope, watching, as Bobby took a few bottled breaths, sitting on a rolling chair just out of the front door. After a few minutes, he tugged on the line, and Moose pulled him back into the airlock Lincoln had cobbled there. Bobby pulled it off and smiled. I'm fine. Gives us a little more time, I guess. Some kids and a couple mothers were watching. One of the mothers spoke up. You going to use that to go out there? Bobby looked out the doors for a moment, and then looked back at her, shaking his head. I don't think I can make it that far with it, but it'll help us out in the garden. The tween girl, Sam, spoke up. Where you took all the shit? Her mother smacked the back of her head. She groaned. Bobby nodded. Yeah, we're using it to make fertilizer. Maybe rig up another plastic room there, get more air, maybe. Sam looked at her mom for a moment, then at Moose. Can I help? Bobby and Moose looked at each other, then at the mother. Up to you, ma'am, Bobby said. Don't let her suffocate. Moose patted the girl. We'll keep an eye on her. Bobby smiled. We could use another helper. Three weeks in, Bobby was laying on one of the upper shelves near the shoe department, throwing a ball up and down to himself. The door to the back warehouse opened as one of the stalkers stepped in. He threw down the last bit of what he was smoking and snuffed it out with his shoe. Bobby rolled over. Billy, right? The man jumped. Holy shit, what the fuck you doing up there? Bobby laughed just relaxing. Billy shook his head and started to walk away. Wait, wait, Bobby said. The stalker paused. Yeah, what do you want, Bill Nye? Bobby laughed and sat up. Your weed? You got more? Billy smiled. You want lit? Bobby shook his head. No, not really, I mean, not now. I mean, it came in a bag, right? You got seeds? Billy laughed. Yeah, the garden, right? Bobby nodded. Yeah. More plants we get going, the better. Billy looked around. What about your cop buddy? I don't feel like getting my ass beat. Bobby shrugged. I really don't think the old rules still apply anymore. Billy laughed. Sure. He pointed up at him. You stay here. I'll get you what seeds I got. Bobby laid back down and threw the ball. Thanks, he said as Billy walked away. He caught the ball again and held it as he noticed a bee on the ceiling. Bobby got everyone working together rearranging the kiddie pool plants, moving the flowering ones near the warehouse door. He kept it propped open and everyone watched. Here and there, a few bees darted over the sunflowers, dandelions that had sprouted, and the clover they had spread around at the pot edges. Bobby laughed. Caught your bees, Philip. Philip walked over to him. Glad they made it. Liz knelt down and watched as one climbed over a tomato flower. She looked up at Bobby. Saves me from using a Q-tip on all of them. Bobby nodded. He then looked over at Moose. We need to do a survey.
Philip had become more organized. He had everyone's names down on the roster and called out the adults. Each in turn raised their hand as their names were called. Sam and the other older kids kept watch over the children over in toys while they convened. Philip sat the roster down and the pointed over at Bobby. Go ahead, give us your newest idea. Bobby stood up from his seat, looking at everyone. We got the fish moved over to the kiddie pools and algae is growing. We've got air. The rainwater is proving drinkable. Hell, we even have bees now, and soon we will have some fresh veggies. He paused. We also have canned and bagged food to supply as for a quite a while, but not forever. He looked as it sank in. There is no one out there. No one has come for us. We have to think long term here. Sam's mother, Beatrice, rose her hand and then shouted. Why? Does anyone know what the hell happened yet? What the hell happened? She put out her hands and looked around. What the hell happened? Bobby shrugged. You know as much as I do. Everything I figure out, I share. Beatrice shook her head. Sack of shit you are then. Moose stepped away from where he was leaning. This sack of shit is the reason I am alive. Hell, he's the reason most of us are alive. He looked over at Bobby. Tell us what you're thinking, bud. Bobby nodded at him. Thank you. He then met everyone's eyes in turn. Protein. It's a fundamental building block of our bodies. The veggies we're growing will help, but we still might starve eventually. He pointed toward the front doors. We might not be able to move the trees, but they're out there, still alive. The grass out there, still alive. We've pulled seeds from dandelions and got them growing. I say we go out with some shovels and get samples of soil. Maybe we can find worms or mycelium or other life that could help us. Beatrice laughed. Worms? What are we going to do with worms? Liz scoffed at her. Genius, Bobby. We could break down paper we aren't using, right? Bobby nodded. Yes, worm farm. We can use them to break down any plant material we aren't using. Leaves, sticks, anything organic. Lincoln took a puff on his vape. The honey buckets from the bathroom. Bobby pointed at him. Yep, they can help break down the waste from the bathrooms. Moose nodded. You know me, I'll help. Bobby smiled. Thank you, sir. Billy raised up his hand, staring at Moose. When that marijuana buds out, we can scrap the plants and feed those to the worms. The man who had the tie on the first day spoke up. You said other life. You thinking we might find aliens or something out there? Bobby shrugged. Probably not, but who knows. I was more thinking along the lines of insects, roly-polies, roaches, flies, anything that we might be able to farm and harvest. Beatrice gagged. You're wanting us to eat roaches. Bobby shook his head. I don't want to, but I don't want us to starve either. Kurt laughed. Cleaned and cooked, make sure they don't get us sick, I don't see why not. I don't want to eat anything that grew in poop or rot, though. Philip put up his hands. Agreed. Keep everyone from getting sick, but can we agree? We should see what's alive out there and see what we can scavenge. The group voted, and the survey was passed. Bobby turned out to be on the money with the insects. Somehow numerous critters kept alive in the now waist-high grass. Grasshoppers proved to be the most numerous and easiest to catch. Kurt cooked those up as they were brought in. A few shovels of dirt later and they had worms. They started two farms, one for filth in the greenhouse, and another that consisted primarily of plant refuse. The filth farm was used to make soil from the feces in the honey buckets, and the plant refuse grew worms and roaches that Bobby started to experiment making recipes with. Lincoln made use of the plastic bags he could find and made tents. He taped them together as secure as he could and staked them over plants in the parking lot. After he let the sun shine on them a full day, he went out on the rolling chair and took a breath from one of the bags. Moose stood ready to pull him back in if he collapsed. Lincoln smiled back at him. He had a fresh breath of air. He scooted back and re-entered the store. Philip patted him. Genius idea. Lincoln smiled. Little rescue breaths. Bobby back into the store, thinking of what all they could make. After several months, people had trimmed down. The shelves were going bare, and most had started shifting toward the grown fruits and veg coupled with ground bugs and worms. Alicia had taken to taking care of the fish and parceled them out as they reproduced and got too big. 
Bobby, Moose, and Lincoln were out checking the tomato field they had planted out past the perimeter. Lincoln carried a honey bucket out to fertilize the massive vines. Moose stood atop the hill and looked out into the endless red waste. He looked down and saw the path the rain had carved as it left the parking lot. A small pond had pooled between two crests, and he could see it had turned green with algae. He pointed, and the other two looked. Their breaths were up, and they headed back quickly. They made it back into the store, and Moose took off his face mask. Did you see that pond? Lincoln laughed. Hell yeah, it's growing shit already. He looked at Bobby. If we make some more tents and carry extra bottles, we could plant that hillside. Garden of Eden, that shit. Bobby smiled. All right, let's talk to Sam and the girls, see what seeds we can spare. Moose smiled. Hell yeah. They planted hill after hill. Lincoln put his craft to use and built small greenhouses of plastic and repurposed pallets at each. Bobby had everyone carry a lighter to check oxygen content before they refilled in them. Little by little, they expanded their farms in every direction. A field of corn billowed to the east of the store. Tomato vines crept over the parking lot. Bees led them along the low paths where oxygen pooled, and they would spread flowers there for them. Beans and squash grew wild. Watermelons wound around the small lime trees. Lincoln and Moose were caught out as a storm rolled in. Luckily, Lincoln had finished building a greenhouse out of spare windows in the back, and it held. The mint garden inside had produced enough oxygen to sustain them, but then lightning struck and shattered the structure. Lincoln was thrown out into the mint field. Moose shouted and ran out into the rain to rescue him. He pulled him up and checked his mask. It was gone, and he was breathing the air. Moose watched, waiting for him to die, but he kept sucking in air. Lincoln looked up at him. We're in the mint low. The bees, they come here. There's air. Moose looked around and found Lincoln's bottles. Yeah, for now. He shoved the bottles at Lincoln. Come on, let's make it back while we can. Lincoln took a breath from one of his bottles. Stay in the lows. See if it can keep us alive. Moose rolled his eyes and started back to the store. Lincoln paused as he looked over the far hill during a lightning flash. What the fuck? They made it back alive and Liz gave Moose a large hug. Lincoln walked over and talked with Philip for a bit, and then Philip went and got the roster. He rang the bell once to summon a meeting. It took about 15 minutes. Kurt had to clean up the skillet before turning over the kitchen area to the kids to clean up. And then the adults moved to the electronics department for the meeting. Philip sighed and looked over at Lincoln. Tell him. Lincoln, still wet from the storm outside, looked around at everyone. He reached in his pocket and pulled out his vape and took a puff. He let the vapor roll out from his nose and then nodded. Uh, I saw something tonight, he paused. I saw another store out there. On the other side of the Mint Hills, there's another store. People started whispering to each other. Billy leaned over to Bobby. What's he mean? There's another store? Liz looked around and then spoke up. Like our store? Another? Lincoln nodded. Yeah, I saw it. Bobby stood up. Did you see anyone? There are other survivors? Lincoln shook his head. No, I just saw it in a flash of lightning. We were short on air. We had to hurry back. Philip hit his hammer on a wood cutting board. Everyone listen. Everyone quieted. Tomorrow after the storm passes, I say we mount an expedition and meet our neighbors. Smiles and laughs spread amongst the crowd. The vote passed unanimously. Moose led the party through the low areas. The saved their bottles and masks until they reached the last ridge. Moose looked around at everyone. Billy, Liz, Bobby, and Lincoln were with him. He pointed, and they all saw it. The blue building stood just as theirs did, a circle of store and parking lot cut into the greening red dirt of the planet. Moose breathed shallowly, oxygenating his blood. Masks on, count your breaths. He looked at Bobby. Hope they figured out the plants. Bobby looked around. If they didn't, we're in and out. I don't want to die out here today. Everyone nodded. Liz stepped gingerly through the rotten corpses in the parking lot. She pointed. No one cleaned them up. Billy nodded. Lincoln walked up to the front, staring at the open doors. Bobby shook his head and stepped inside. The group stared into the quiet space. 
Bodies lay where they fell and rotted. Moose looked at his friends in turn. Let's go back. Each nodded in turn. Lincoln shrugged, last to turn away from the quiet store. There's lots of plastic we can use. Bobby looked at him over his shoulder. We'll grow a path here, make it safer. You're right. Maybe we can bury them too. Lincoln turned and caught up with him. Count your breaths. Test number 29 success. Clarification, upper life forms taking hold. Planetary seating started. Awaiting word for mission completion. Mission complete. Lock in for seating of next world.